The National Action Council for Minorities in, in Engineering, otherwise known as NACME, is indeed pleased to be a part of this very, very special national summit for Project Lead the Way. As I'm sure all of you are aware, Project Lead the Way is a very, very special and important partner with NACME uh, in a number of efforts designed to promote diversity and equity in engineering education and engineering career development. And we're indeed delighted to be here. Let me begin by saying just a little bit about who we are at NACME. Uh, we are, of course, a legendary organization, having celebrated recently our 40th anniversary. Uh, we were founded originally in 1974 by a group of major leaders in global engineering and technology, led by Reginald Jones, who in 1974 was president and CEO of General Electric. Reginald Jones and a number of other leading industrialists that he brought together were concerned at that time about a problem, a conundrum, that unfortunately continues to exist today. And that is the underrepresentation of minorities among the ranks of their engineering and technology workforce. Uh, this group of leaders decided to do something proactive about that, came together, formed a number of committees and task forces, and ultimately, in 1974, agreed to create an organization that historically became the National Action Council for Minorities in Engineering, organized principally around scholarships with the objective of creating a kind of public-private partnership that would really be a driver of resolving what has now become to be known at NACME as the new American dilemma. And so our vision is an engineering workforce that looks like America. For the past four decades, NACME has been diligently working on trying to address uh, that vision and there are a number of partnerships that have resulted along the way. And again, the partnership with Project Lead the Way represents one such endeavor. We are supported by a national board of directors that I'm sure all of you looking at this slide would, would agree reads kind of like a who's who in global engineering and technology. Uh, these are a list of companies whose CEOs and C-suite executives likewise agree that unless something is done to significantly increase the representation of those who have been underserved by engineering education and the engineering workforce, that the consequences for their companies as well as the consequences for U.S. competitiveness are very, very severe. And so we thank this group of board companies, universities, and of course the National Academy of Engineering for being partners with NACME in the effort to promote diversity and equity in the ranks of the field. We have a second group, uh, a relatively new group, that we call our NACME Corporate Council. Again, an organization uh, that consists of a number of significant companies, companies that have not yet made the financial commitment to join the NACME Board of Directors, but nevertheless, a group of companies who are equally concerned about the challenges of diversity and equity in the field of engineering education and career development and who have likewise joined forces with us to try to carry forward on realizing that vision. Now, an engineering workforce that looks like America. We like to put numbers and metrics behind everything that we do. Uh, and if you look at the graph here, I think that if a picture really is worth a thousand words, and I think that the symbolism uh, optically here is very, very clear. Uh, we have a significant mismatch or variance between the participation rates of underrepresented minorities in the American demographic reality and the participation rates of those groups in both engineering education as well as the engineering workforce. I like to refer to this as the proportionality conundrum. What we're after at NACME obviously is merging these two pie charts so that the metrics become more equal between participation in the demographic reality and participation in the engineering workforce, which obviously is preceded by engineering education. Until we're able to do that, NACME's vision is unfulfilled and America's capacity to really drive the level of competitiveness that we have been known for as a nation continues to be threatened. And so let's take a deeper look at three of the groups that NACME represents as a part of our strategy, a part of our mission and our vision, and what these numbers actually suggest to us. We know, for example, that in terms of participation rates in the U.S. population, 
as far as 2014 data would suggest, about 13% penetration of African Americans in the U.S. population. Contrasted with, what is that, 2.6% engineering faculty, but the larger number, 3.6% engineering workforce, clearly there is a lot of work that needs to be done to equalize the opportunities for members of the African American community to participate equally in engineering education and the engineering workforce to bring to innovation, entrepreneurship, and invention all of the opportunities, perspectives, and viewpoints that diversity around the table actually drives. The American Indian Alaska Native situation, uh, a smaller N, obviously, uh, and a smaller percentage participation in the engineering workforce than participation in the American demographic. Now to the rapidly, the most rapidly growing uh, underrepresented minority group in America that rapidly is becoming not an underrepresented minority group, a rather significant penetration in terms of the American population at 17.5%, but in terms of engineering workforce participation, 6.3%, bachelor's degree participation, 9%. In each of these instances, the three groups that NACME represents historically, African Americans, American Indians, Alaska Natives, and Latinos. The challenge is very, very clear. We are not producing at the baccalaureate degree level enough representatives from these groups to populate an engineering workforce at a level and at a proportion that would be more representative of their likewise participation in the overall American population. And we need to wonder and be concerned about the implications for that underrepresentation in driving the competitive opportunities for America. Now let's look at the participation rates not only of underrepresented minorities, but also of women. NACME is likewise concerned about what is happening to the participation rates of women uh, in engineering careers and in engineering education. And if we look at the top line, uh, the blue line in this particular chart, uh, we see that over time there have been ebbs and flows, now a kind of uh, perhaps more steady state situation at about 19%. That 19% again represents a rather significant departure from the overall participation of women in the workforce, the American workforce generally. And so in addition to the concerns we have about underrepresented minorities, I think we also need to be very concerned about moving more women into engineering so that likewise they are able to participate and to contribute to U.S. competitiveness. So the question then becomes, how has NACME attempted to resolve what we have defined as the new American dilemma? Take these graphs and charts collectively, and we have framed uh, the current situation, the current challenge, as the new American dilemma. We define the new American dilemma as the need to address the underrepresentation of African American, Latinos, and American Indians in engineering education and the engineering workforce, and the need to resolve the dilemma in order for America to be better positioned to compete globally. How then does NACME attempt to resolve that? What then is the NACME strategy? Since about 2010, we've been operating with a business model that has four major key results areas supporting it. Scholarships, pre-engineering, research, and then a relatively new area of concern, policy. In the time that remains, I'd like to really focus on the first two aspects of the NACME strategy, scholarships and pre-engineering, because I think that these represent opportunities for partnership with Project Lead the Way. They also represent opportunities that already are alive and well and working, and opportunities that we would wish to expand. So let's talk first about the primary reason for NACME's existence, and that is the opportunity to build upon that public-private partnership that I talked about earlier, that really was launched around 1974 when NACME was formed, and use that public partnership as a vehicle to drive scholarship support for underrepresented minority students pursuing bachelor's degrees and beyond in engineering. By the numbers, and I know it is not good adequate to read charts, uh, but I do want to reflect on these numbers and just call them out because I think that they're rather significant. So since our founding in 1974, 
We have supported more than 24,000 minority students who have been engaged in engineering education at a network of universities around the nation. That's amounted to a significant $142 million in scholarship support. We currently support annually about 1,300 undergraduate students. And we also manage the Alfred P. Sloan Minority PhD Program in STEM and the Indigenous Graduate Student Partnership. So you could really add to that 1,300 undergraduate number, another couple of hundred doctoral students pursuing PhD degrees. Um, we provide about $5.5 billion annually uh, in scholarship support. Over the years, over 40 years, developed about relationships with about 160 different colleges and universities in the nation. Today, that relationship is focused on 51 NACME partner universities. Who are our NACME scholars? What are they majoring in? And what are their academic qualifications and accomplishments? We found consistently over the last several years that mechanical engineering uh, appears to be by far uh, the discipline with the engineering of choice. We've seen some growth in biomedical engineering, but mechanical, uh, civil, uh, and electrical appear to be the top three areas of focus for our students. But again, movement continues to occur. We have a new initiative underway in computer engineering and computer science. We've been challenged by HP, for example, one of our legendary board companies, and some of our other technology uh, companies to really drive more scholarship support for students earning degrees in computer science and computer engineering, since in terms of the hiring of a subset of my NACME board companies, software engineers are really uh, a target of hiring, and so we're working on uh, directing more scholarships in that area. With regard to gender, we're very, very proud that 32% of our NACME scholars are women. When you compare that to the numbers in the previous chart, you see that NACME is exceeding by a rather significant degree uh, the participation rates of women in, in this case, engineering education. And certainly, no surprise with regard to ethnicity, uh, NACME scholarships participants tend to track the realities in the American population. So as the Latino percentage of the population increases, we would expect to see increases in the participation rates of Latino NACME scholars, and that is exactly what we are experiencing. Now, as I indicated, NACME today has relationships with 51 colleges and universities around the nation that offer engineering. This map uh, gives you a listing of those 51 universities. A number of these universities are already involved with Project Lead the Way uh, in a variety of capacities. Uh, and the other thing I want to point out about these universities is that we provide scholarship support to about half of these universities, which means that students, minority students who are admitted to engineering study at the universities on this list that receive our block grant scholarships, those students are eligible for scholarship support from NACME, something I think that all of the Project Lead the Way uh, executives and teachers and administrators ought to keep in mind because there are scholarship opportunities, as we say, at the end of the tunnel. We also maintain an online resume directory. We require all of our NACME scholars to keep updated resumes on file that are used by our board companies to provide opportunities for internships and full-time hires. What we have found is that internship experiences are very, very important in terms of maintaining the motivation of our young people as well as providing real opportunities for employment at that particular company after graduation. Now let me move to pre-engineering programs, because this is where I think the connections with Project Lead the Way are really beginning to grow and develop and pretend some opportunities for expansion. Among the things that NACME does is provide a suite of materials. We call this our engineering awareness portfolio. Materials that are designed to introduce minority kids, parents, teachers, and most especially guidance counselors in middle school and high school to engineering. What is engineering? the excitement of innovation, discovery, and entrepreneurship, the courses you need to take to become an engineer, all of the questions that need to be answered and resolved as students are deciding their particular career track. These materials are available and are available for sharing uh, with uh, the Project Lead the Way installations across the country, as well as with other STEM academies and the like that are focused on producing more diversity and equity in the ranks of engineering education. We also are very proud to have a long-standing relationship with Project Lead the Way and with the National Academy of Engineering around a concept we call the Academy of Engineering. 
We started with uh, about 13 academies in September 2008, and as you can see from the chart, that number has now grown rather significantly to 97 academies around the country. Project Lead the Way provides for most of these academies the curriculum base. The National Academy Foundation provides the overall small learning community, school within a school kind of a leadership organizational structure. NACME provides scholarship support, professional development dollars for teachers uh, in the academies of engineering, as well as opportunities for scholarships for students who graduate from an academy of engineering and that are admitted to freshman engineering at one of the 51 universities displayed on the other slide, scholarship dollars are available. And so again, an opportunity to tighten the coordination and partnership between what you're doing in Project Lead the Way and what we're doing at NACME and what NAF is engaged in with the small learning community around the Academy of Engineering. 97 around the nation, I'm sure that there is an Academy of Engineering either in or near your respective cities. If you're not aware of that activity, increase your, your knowledge because I think there's some opportunities there for your students and for your young people. When we step back and look at a map of the NACME footprint, uh, we have a presence across the nation as is indicated with the universities, undergraduate programs, doctoral programs, academies, a number of other initiatives. When we did that, we decided that we wanted to take somewhat of a more regional approach moving forward. So we launched something called the NACME STEM integration model. You see here the varying components of the STEM integration model. And let me just show you uh, how that model has evolved over time. The beta sites were New York and New Jersey. This chart displays a listing of our partners. The partners include both academies of engineering, universities, community colleges, an alumni base, Sloan faculty, and a number of board companies that are headquartered in those regions. We basically have asked the partners to come together and to sign memoranda of understanding. The memoranda of understanding are designed to create concrete steps and deliverables that are designed to move minority students from middle school through the completion of a bachelor's degree in engineering with support, including internships and other activities coming from the board companies on the NACME board located in those areas. So following the implementation of the pilot sites in New York and New Jersey, we also have launched in Texas, uh, the Texas NACME STEM integration model uh, is very engaged. Uh, we actually have a person on the ground uh, that is employed by NACME as a coordinator for the effort in Texas, and that model is evolving. We expect soon to be engaged in California. Uh, California, obviously being a large state, also happens to have a significant number of academies of engineering, a number of community college partners, and a number of university partners, as well as the headquarters for a lot of our NACME board companies. So we're currently looking for funding uh, to do a more substantial launch in California. And again, for those of you who are here from California, these are opportunities. Opportunities that can result in scholarships for your kids going on to engineering education. And if you're in California, you need to be connected to what is becoming the next wave of the NACME STEM integration effort. We also are very much involved in Northern California through a grant from the Chevron Foundation. Here you have six high schools uh, that NACME is working collaboratively with Chevron. Project Lead the Way curriculum is in use, and NACME is providing our pre-engineering materials as well as scholarship support and curriculum development dollars for teachers to work outside of the classroom to help drive uh, the commitment to uh, engineering education and diversity and equity. Uh, and so through the NACME STEM integration model, the effort is to take advantage of the, the, the national presence, the national footprint of NACME programs across the nation, but to pull back and organize those programs more coherently, and we also think more powerfully along a regional model. And so, with 46 seconds left, uh, I conclude <laughs> with the dream metaphor. Uh, again, we've just celebrated 40 years, and we're very, very proud of our 40th birthday. Uh, we raised $1.1 million, by the way, a couple of weeks ago at our 40th anniversary birthday party uh, to support scholarships that your kids ought to be taking advantage of. But as a part of that 40-year celebration, we really anchored that celebration on the notion of partnership and collaboration. 
The thing that really has driven NACME for 40 years is our ability to, to collaborate and partner with organizations like Project Lead the Way. We think that there's still lots of opportunities for Project Lead the Way NACME collaboration moving forward. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to making that partnership actually work. I did it. <laughs>